we'll get started here and I'm going to give um, a quick introduction to uh, myself and this event. Uh, and then I'm gonna toss it over to um, a couple of my colleagues who are gonna really take the reins uh, and give you all of the information that you possibly are going to want to know about St. Johnsbury Academy. So first of all, thank you for joining us in this uh, relatively unusual setting. We so desperately wish that we were all together in South Church or Fuller Hall or one of our places on campus, but we're going to uh, roll with what we have and we're glad to see all your faces one way or another. And it's exciting to see at least a portion of the class of 2024 uh, here in front of us. So um, this, uh, event tonight is going to really um, be mostly for question and answer. Um, and we're going to, like I said, we're going to keep everyone muted just for ease of use tonight. And the chat box, there's a chat feature on Zoom. Um, and you can ask all of your questions through chat. Um, so I didn't introduce myself yet, but my name is David Baker. I'm one of the, uh, I work in the admissions office uh, at the academy. And um, I'm going to be moderating the whole chat box feature tonight. So after I do this introduction, that'll be one of the last times you hear from me until um, one of the first questions is asked. Um, but that's how we're gonna do all of our Q&A tonight. So it's gonna be all through the chat. So if you have a question, um, there's a chat box that you can type it in uh, and I will, um, I will give that question to whoever is going to best answer it from St. Johnsbury Academy. So hopefully that works. I'm also going to admit tonight that this is the first virtual info session of its kind at St. Johnsbury Academy. So there may be some technical difficulties. And if there are, we're gonna just ask that you go along with us and uh, be as patient as possible. So um, it's gonna be a great uh, evening and I think you're gonna get a lot of information. Um, and at the end of this meeting too, we'll let you know how to ask follow-up questions if you have them uh, as we move forward. So that being said, um, that'll be the last thing that I say for a little while. I'm gonna to toss it over to, um, I say toss it over to me, it's, she's over a couple boxes, to Melissa Murphy. She's uh, another Associate Director of Admissions and she's probably the most familiar face or voice for you as a uh, day incoming freshman. She's the person you've been dealing with um, most closely. She's gonna introduce herself and the rest of our panel of experts uh, tonight. So Melissa, you can take, uh, take it from there. All right, thank you, David. Hi, everyone. It's nice to see your faces. Um, I know I've seen some of you before. Um, we've been working together for a few months, I think, uh, for most of you. Um, we're kind of all in different stages of, of the process of, um, of applying to the Academy. Some of you have been accepted already and received your letter. Some are sort of in, in that process of, of uh, waiting for some more information from schools. Um, I do just want to let you know I'm working with all of your schools. Um, they've been great. They're trying to get into their school. To, um, to be able to give us what we need um, to complete your file. So I just wanted to kind of let you know that, don't worry, uh, we are working together to do that. Um, and after this call, if any of you have any questions, I know I sent an email to every person that did RSVP tonight. So um, I did let you know where you are in the process. Um, but after this, if you guys have any questions, I'm always available. Um, and so please feel free to let me know. Um, so tonight we're gonna answer some questions that you have. We're gonna talk about programs that we have, expectations that we have. Um, things like that. So um, I guess with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our team. Uh, we have Beth Schwanier, who is our assistant head um, of Campus Life. And we have Bill Vitton, who is our dean of academics. And we have Sean Murphy, who is our director of guidance. Um, and so they're here to talk about their areas um, and again, to answer questions at the end that you have. So I'll let you guys take it over. Beth, you want to start us off? Sure, I'm happy to start you off. Uh, Welcome everybody. It's, um, it's great to see all of your faces. I just want to do kind of a check that I do with my class. Um, if you can hear us, can you just give us a thumbs up so everybody knows that we're in? Okay, that's pretty good. Um, first, I just, um, I'll introduce myself. I am the assistant headmaster for Campus Life here. Um, we'll be spending a lot of time uh, together as you start your journey into uh, the ninth grade experience. But before we get there, I just want to talk about a couple of things um, in terms of where you are right now and the kinds of things that you might be feeling. Um, because as eighth graders, there's been a lot of attention that's been put on maybe what it looks like to be graduates this year. And so um, from a very personal standpoint, I want you to know that as a mom, um, I have a senior graduating from the academy this year. So I understand that you're moving into your eighth grade, like last part of your semester. Um, where you get to be kind of the top 
top dog at the end of the year and there's lots of things that you've been looking forward to. So um, I empathize with how you're feeling right now and um, know that I understand it from a very personal level. That said, um, there's lots of things that we want you to get excited about for, um, for next year. Um, and I think that many of you have had the opportunity to meet myself and Mr. Vinton and Mr. Murphy uh, in some of your shadow days with Mrs. Murphy, uh, as many of them as we got in before uh, we had to shut ourselves down. Um, but I just want to bring you back to Headmaster Lovett's three promises for the Academy, because uh, I think it's a good way for you to start thinking about what your experience is going to be. And as he told you uh, when you came in the fall to eighth grade night, um, he talked about helping you become uh, the best people that you can be. And um, high school is a lot of uh, time where you get to spend formative years with lots of people uh, and that come in in lots of different phases of your life. And so uh, we're going to talk a lot about what that's going to look like tonight, not only with your schedule, um, but also with advisories and all of the extracurricular world that you get to be a part of. And so coming to school, um, maybe you're taking a look at it from a different perspective and how much you enjoy being with your friends every day and seeing your teachers every day and not having to always do this virtual um, world. But being becoming the best person that you can be is one of the promises that um, that we try to help students become. The second he speaks on is that we're going to um, help you become the best learner that you can be. And I would imagine if you're experiencing a lot of the things that we're experiencing in our home and with our students, um, you're becoming different kinds of learners right now. And there's lots of opportunity to be thinking outside of the box, but I would imagine um, there's lots of frustration on some levels as well. So um, we're gonna be different learners and um, we're certainly gonna continue to help you become the best learner that you can be while you're here. Um, but we also know that there's going to be a whole new world ahead of us as we embark upon this journey together um, as you begin to be your freshman year. The third piece is that um, we're going to do everything that we can to help you become a part of something bigger than yourself. And I think for me, this is where um, a lot of the pieces from my world um, come into play with our incoming freshmen whether it has to do with um, your first kind of contact with me when we talked about um, who your advisor might be and when those uh, when that information is going to come out to um, what's orientation going to look like or what's your class d uh, what's your class dean going to do with you on that first day a lot of those things we're going to talk about tonight but um, <clears throat> first and foremost i just want to let you know we did some talking about um, when we're going to put information out for you about who you get to sign up for for advisors um, that will come from the Campus Life Office. You'll have a letter from me. And we try to give you one of your top four choices for advisors. We know that um, not everybody's going to get their first choice, but we do try to make sure that you um, are, are paired with someone that has some similar interests as you do, because that's a relationship that we want to have continue uh, throughout your four years here. So a pretty important piece uh, as far as that goes. I mentioned freshman orientation. Maybe that's not on your horizon yet, um, but it will be. And again, you'll get lots of communications from the school and maybe we can talk more about that as we go. Um, but anything that's covered in campus life from advisory to orientation to summer programming to athletics. Um, if you're interested in the HALO program, um, there's been lots of questions that have come in from, um, from your families. Uh, to the admissions office about the HALO program and what that's going to look like this summer. Um, to any of the clubs and activities that we offer at school. And so um, I would just say this, uh, there's a lot of unknown for all of us. Um, we are planning as if we're starting the school year with all of you here with the orientation starting the day that it's supposed to start on <clears throat> in, uh, in August and um, with all of our pre-seasons hopefully being open. But as you know, we're all bound by decisions above ours. So with that, um, I'm happy to field any questions, but you might want to hear about the bigger scope of, of what the school, but anything extracurricular falls under campus life and I'm happy to help. Awesome. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Schwanier. Let's go to uh, Mr. Vinton. Mr. Vinton is our Dean of Academics. Well, thank you, uh, David, and thank you, Beth. Um, one of the important things to be thinking about as we kind of move into this brand new year is, of course, your academic schedule for the coming year. Now, Mr. Murphy will actually talk a little bit more about some of the details about that. Um, but one of the things that we really want to just emphasize to you, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword. The academy is a pretty big school, particularly for Vermont. 
And the benefit of that is you have lots and lots and lots of opportunities that you can actually use in order to explore whatever you're interested in. Um, and the downside is it kind of feels like you're one person in a big school perhaps. But we work really hard to make sure that you don't feel as though you're lost in a large bunch of people. We really try very hard to create lots of opportunities to find small groups of people that you will know really, really well. We'll talk a little bit more about the importance of being parts of clubs and uh, activities uh, like sports, for example, that will give you an opportunity to get to know people. Um, my predecessor, uh, Mr. Burroughs, um, was often quoted a three word phrase that we used a lot to help keep in our minds what it is that we're actually trying to accomplish when we work with you. And the three words were known, grown, and inspired. We want to make sure that we really know every single one of you and that there's somebody here at the Academy that really knows you very, very well. And more than just one, but quite a few people that know every single student very well. Uh, we hope that this becomes a place where you can really grow and reach your full potential. And we work really hard to try to make sure that happens. And part of the growing is to find something that you're really passionate about and that's where the inspired part comes in. We have lots and lots of things that happen here at the Academy. Everyone can find something here that will really excite you, make you really look forward to coming to school every day. It might be what happens in the classroom, it might be what happens after the academic day is done when you go to your sports, but we want everybody to really feel that they have that ability to be inspired here. Um, we organize our school mission around three more words, community, uh, communi uh, <coughs> character, and inquiry. And those are the things that we use to guide everything we do. And community is an incredibly important part of what it is that we try to really accomplish here. Again, to give everybody an opportunity to find a small group of people that they become really involved with. The first place that happens is probably in your advisory, which will be the first small group that you'll get involved with when you go through orientation here. Um, but there are lots and lots of other opportunities that people have here as well. During your time here, um, you will get the opportunity to take lots and lots of courses in a wide variety of different um, academic and vocational and uh, other kinds of areas, artistic areas. Um, <clears throat> as a freshman, you will have the opportunity to choose eight courses and maybe actually a couple more if, if, if you're really interested in some things like arts, performing arts, or in um, areas like that. You don't have a lot of options as a freshman, um, but as the years move on, you will find that you have more and more electives available to you. And Mr. Murphy will actually talk a little bit more about those, but we hope that the freshman year really serves as a solid foundation for everything that comes later on. So with that, I think that's a good place to start and I can certainly answer any questions that come up later, um, but I'm gonna hand it back to Mr. Baker right now. Perfect, thank you, Mr. Minton. <clears throat> um, and before I introduce Mr. Murphy, I, I will say, um, as you think of questions, if you hear something uh, in, in one of the introductions, you can think back to what Ms. Schwanier uh, opened with or what Mr. Vinton said or anything Mr. Murphy is about to say, feel free to start firing away in the chat box uh, and we'll just have the list of questions build and then when the time comes for us to open up the floor, I'll already have a list of questions. And we have some frequently asked questions sort of stashed away that if, uh, if we need to <clears throat> into our own question bank, we will. But we'd love to hear from you first. So please feel free um, to utilize the chat feature and ask any burning question you might have. Even if it's totally unrelated to anything you've heard so far, even if it's unrelated to what you think, you know, the specialty areas of these folks are, this is a great opportunity and open forum to ask questions. And if, if we feel like um, they're ones that should be answered offline, 
we can certainly uh, we'll, we'll address those um, through email and things like that. But please feel free to start using the chat box. Um, and for now, we'll introduce uh, Mr. Sean Murphy. He's our director of guidance. Mr. Murphy, take it away. Hey, everybody. Uh, probably more important to me, besides being director of guidance in college counseling, I'm the person that does the scheduling. So I build the master schedule. I'm going to be the ones that put you in classes. Um, maybe some of you have been contacted by either me personally or someone from my team uh, this last week or so. Um, and if we haven't contacted you yet, we will be shortly. But I'm the one that's going to take all this information of what you want for classes and put it together into your freshman schedule. Um, so first thing I'd like to shout out, I'm here almost every day from now until you start school in end of August. So if you have questions about your schedules or concerns um, or just you don't quite understand how this is working, you can email me or call me anytime and I will get back to you. Um, but just to talk a little bit about a schedule at St. J Academy, we're probably very different than what you're used to. So um, we are on a semester schedule. It's a five by five block schedule, which means each semester you take five courses. And for the most part, you're gonna take five different courses each semester. So you're gonna get a full credit uh, for each course you take each semester. And then it's gonna change when it comes to the spring. Um, now, we do have some exceptions to that rule, some AP courses and our freshman humanities course that you will all take, um, which incorporates our English and history class, are all year courses. So we do have a few that will meet all year, but probably 80% of what you take while you're at the academy is going to be semester only. Um, it's going to meet for 70 minutes. You're going to do it for that entire semester. And then we're going to switch you to your next set of classes. So that's what enables us to give you lots and lots of options as Mr. Vinton alluded to while you're here. Um, the cool thing I think about the five by five block schedule, and we started this oh, 17, 18 years ago now, um, it created an incredible wealth of electives that you can take. And as Mr. Vinton said, yes, your freshman year, um, we, we kind of dictate a lot of your classes, but we are gonna give you a few electives. Uh, but what's really unique about St. Johnsbury Academy is we only require 26 specific credits to graduate. Out of those 26 credits, 17 are things we pick for you. So you're gonna do four English, three math, three history, three science, and things like that. Um, but out of that, so if you can take eight classes each year, everybody here is gonna get the opportunity to take 32 different classes while they're at St. J Academy. Um, so we pick 17 out of the 26 credits. So everybody here should get a minimum of 15 electives before they graduate at St. J. And your freshman year, typically you get two or three electives. Sophomore, you get a few more. By your senior year, a lot of my seniors are getting six or seven elective courses um, in their senior year. So don't panic if you can't take something right away. There will be opportunities as you move forward um, to take some different things. And you can always ask, right? So I'm going to be pretty general when we talk about classes tonight. Um, and there are always exceptions. If you have a question and something's not working, on the way I explained it, give us a call. We can talk about it to see what we can make happen. All right, so we're gonna be a semester-based schedule. Everybody's gonna have a chance to have five blocks each semester. Typically, I recommend for most of our freshmen that you take four classes each semester and leave a study block. Um, some of you are super ambitious. We do let people in the performing arts, so band, chorus, um, guitar, strings, um, and courses like that are performing art, acting, dance, um, take a fifth class if they want to and not use a study block because um, we want you to continue on with those things if that's something you have a real interest in. But probably a lot of you are going to choose a study block and I think it's important to consider that. Um, if you're playing sports, um, no longer are we playing in a local town leagues where you're driving 10 minutes with your parents to games. Um, now you're getting on a bus at 2.30 in the afternoon, driving to Rutland at two hours away, having a game at six o'clock at night, getting back on a bus and driving home. Um, and some of you might not get home till 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. So those study blocks, I think, are extremely important. Um, but more than happy to talk about it. If you don't think you need it, we can, we can certainly look at different options for you to get your work done. Um, now, another unique thing about our schedule, we level here at St. Johnsbury Academy. So that's probably new than what you've done at most of your schools. Most of you have been in the same classroom um, with all your friends and having an algebra class or a science class. Um, when you come to us, we do level. And so what that means is we offer courses at basic, standard, and accelerated levels in the freshman year. 
Um, you can go to college at any of those levels. Um, but basically, we want you to get you in the right learning group um, so you have the best experience. All right. So we do not track students. I like to highlight that fact. We do not track students here. Um, so if you may start in an accelerated class, and if it's not the right course, we can move you down to standard. Um, if you start in standard and it's way too easy, we can move you up to accelerated. And there is no timeline for that. So if you're here for two days and you're like, oh my God, I don't know what I did, but this class is way too hard, uh, come talk to us and we'll see what we can do. But I move kids all throughout the year. We move it, um, we try to keep as flexible as we can to do what's right for each individual student. Um, you also don't take classes at all the same level. Um, some of us have strengths and weaknesses in different academic areas um, where um, I'm not probably as good in English uh, or history as some people, um, but I'm, I'm pretty strong in math. So I would have taken accelerated math classes in standard history and English. Um, that's perfectly okay. Uh, very few of our students take all of one level. Um, most of our students are taking um, a wide variety of level of courses while they're here. All right. So um, you can move whenever you want. You can move within a semester. You can move at the end of the semester. You certainly can move at the end of each year. And at the end of each year, we're going to try to push you. If we think you're, um, say you're getting a 92 in all your classes and we think you can do a little bit more. Our teachers will recommend, department chairs will recommend that you move up. Um, we want you to be challenged. We want you to be pushed. And, and that's what we think our leveling process does. So how do we go about the leveling? Um, it's really all not, it's not all that complicated. Most of you have taken a placement exam. Um, if you haven't taken a placement exam, we'll have information at a later date for you on that. Because uh, obviously it's not really possible to get you all in one room right now. Uh, but if you took the placement exam, that is not the end all be all of how we level. And I just want to put that out there. I think it's a scary exam for a lot of you. You sat down for two and a half, three hours in a group of 30 people and um, you took this test and you got the results back saying what grade level you're equivalent, what percentile you're in. And that's just one school that we use for leveling. Um, I will tell you this, the most important thing I look at and I review all the leveling is what did you do at your sending school? Are you, you're an A student. Um, we have your recommendations from your teachers. They recommend accelerated classes. You have the grades. Um, we're probably going to give you that level, right? So I like to say, as long as two out of the three things match up, your grades, what's recommended, and what the exam score looks like, we're probably going to give you the level that two out of the three things match. Um, it's pretty simple. If there is a disagreement um, on leveling, what we're going to do is we're going to give you a call and we're going to have a conversation about that. So if you recommend, and then this has been the most common thing I've gotten so far, um, where people have signed up for standard level courses, the teacher recommended accelerated, the placement test said accelerated, and then I'm going to give you a call and say, hey, why aren't you going to do the accelerated course? Because that's really looks like where you belong. Um, so that's scheduling in a nutshell. Um, it's, it's fluid. Uh, we make changes all the time. There's always room for discussion. Um, so if you think you're in the wrong class, please, please come and see me, right? Um, finally, on the freshman courses, I know this is what you're most interested in. Um, as I said, we're gonna have, your freshman year is probably your most restrictive year we have for classes. Um, everybody here is gonna take freshman humanities and that's your English and history credit. You're gonna get two credits. It's gonna go all year. Um, you'll have the same group of teachers for that year um, and they teach in pairs. It's our biggest class. We will average probably 24 kids in that class. It'll have two teachers. Um, you'll have a primary English and a primary history teacher paired together, and you'll work with that group of kids either in a big group or break out into smaller groups throughout the year. So that will be two credits. Everybody's going to take a math class, um, and it'll either be Algebra 1 or Foundations of Algebra. I know some of you um, have heard that we might have an, an exam to test higher than that, and we'll have more information at a later date about that. Um, but so pretty much most of our freshmen will do Algebra 1 or Foundations. Everybody will take biology. Um, everybody is going to take health. Um, now, this is where it gets a little interesting. Um, in the past, we've made everybody take Complet and PE as freshmen, um, and you certainly are more than willing to welcome to do that. Um, you can do the PE and Complet. They meet every other day. Typically, we put them opposite each other. So one day you go to PE, the next day you go to Complet, and they're both a half credit. Um, but if you're really into to computers, and you think you're beyond complet uh, and you're a solid math student, 
if you would like to go beyond Complet, you certainly are more than welcome to start out in our computer science course. So this is the first time we've offered this to freshmen. Um, you have that option to uh, jump to computer science if that's one of your passions. Also, if you're in the robotics, and we have a lot of freshmen like to do robotics. Uh, I think we had 35 this year. If you wanna do the robotics program, that can also replace your computer lit requirement. All right. Now for PE. Um, intro to PE is an every other day course. It's a half credit. Um, everybody is required to have a credit and a half of PE before they graduate per state laws. So if you wanna do the intro to PE, you're gonna get a half credit towards that goal right there. Um, some of you, PE might be a little scary or you might be a little intimidated by that or regular gym class is not for you. If you're a dancer, we would love for you to take our dance program and you're certainly more than welcome to start out in a dance class. If you're a multi-sport athlete um, and you know you're gonna be playing two or three sports your freshman year, we would welcome, if you don't wanna do the intro to PE, you're gonna start out in athletics, but at some point, you're gonna to have to take an exercise science class with us before you graduate. So if you don't wanna do the intro to PE, use your sports credits, that's fine, uh, but you're gonna to have to do exercise science at, at some point before you graduate, before your senior year. Um, also, if, as far as PE credits go, if you elect to do the intro to PE, there's a couple different ways you can earn that second credit in phys, in phys ed. Um, you can take an exercise science class, or you can play the same JV or varsity sport for two years, or play two different JV or varsity sports to earn that last credit. So we do have some flexible pathways for you guys to get those credits uh, instead of the old model. Now for electives, and I know this is what gets everybody Pretty excited. What do you do with those extra two classes now that I'm going to give you? Um, and really the answer is whatever you want to do within reason. Um, there's no right or wrong things. We have some students that really like math and they know they want to be engineers and science people and they'll take algebra one in the fall and algebra two in the spring so they can have that continuation of learning. Um, we have other students um, that really want to get going on their foreign language. So we're going to offer Spanish, French, Japanese, and Latin for the freshmen. Um, I will warn you, we only offer standard foreign languages in French and Spanish. So Japanese and Latin are accelerated courses for us. Um, or maybe you're an arts person. Um, so you can certainly do band, jazz band by audition. So if you think you're a really talented musician, you wanna do jazz band, um, we're gonna get you, you can talk to me and I'll get you in touch with Mr. Rao, our jazz band instructor, and he will set up an audition time for you to be in that. Um, we have strings, so if you play the viola, the violin, the cello, um, I'm not a string expert. I, I, I really don't know what other instruments there are besides those three, but um, if you're into strings, uh, that certainly is, don't laugh at me, Mr. Schweiner. I am not a strings person, uh, but that's certainly an option. Uh, guitar is an option, chorus, modern dance, ballet, popular dance, um, intro to acting, and we have foundations of drawing and painting that's open to all freshmen. Um, make a push for the drawing and painting if you're an artist. That's our foundations course. So if you want to get into printmaking, sculpture, um, um, photography, clay, that's like our intro course to the arts. So if, if that's really your thing, I would strongly recommend doing the drawing and paint. Um, if you're a tech ed kid, if you want to work with your hands, you're, you're more of a hands-on learner. We have a career navigation program um, that's one credit. You'll get to experience 15 different modules that we offer in our tech center. And so you get a chance to see everything that we do down there. And that's a good overview course for freshmen. Uh, and finally, I'd like to put, put in a push for study skills. If, if you're really worried about your freshman year and managing your time, um, if, if you don't wanna use a study hall, we do have a program called Study Skills where you can, um, it's an assigned place of your study hall, it doesn't take up any, any class time, uh, where you can learn about getting better organized for your classes, taking better notes, learning good study habits, and get some support in the classroom setting. So um, about a third of our freshmen off the, uh, take that opportunity to do that instead of a traditional study hall also. I don't know, do I, let's see if I have any questions. That's yes, a lot uh, of perfect, perfect timing, actually, because we just got a question, Mr. Murphy, about <coughs> um, timing of uh, when students will, should be getting their schedules. I know some are possibly out already, but I know that's something that you will, you'll be able to answer. Yeah, I haven't built the master schedule yet, in all honesty. Um, hopefully that's going to start next week. I was trying to, um, I would like to get 100 students um, out of the freshman class with their requests. 
before I build the master schedule to make sure everything's going to work. So the plan is um, starting next Monday, I'll start building the master schedule, um, run it through some people here at school to make sure everything looks right. It takes about a week to 10 days to go through that process. I would like to think by the end of May, I could have a very, very temporary schedule in place for everybody. Now I will say there will be no teachers attached to that schedule at this time. And um, times may be adjusted as we go into the summer. Um, schedules really are not finalized till the first day of school. Great, thank you so much. Um, this uh, next question that we had come in um, was about uh, a shadow day. Um, I don't know if Melissa or um, Beth, uh, Mrs. Murphy or Ms. Schwann, you wanna speak on, on the shadow day. Obviously our campus is closed for um, a long while, but do you guys wanna speak on that? Um, I, I can, if you, yeah. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, um, those students that have not been able to shadow um, for this year, um, I'm so sorry, because I know it's, a, it's, it's very important for you to come and see campus and, and be with a student um, and really get the feel for it. So I, I, do, I do feel awful about that. Um, but we will be, I mean, we're around all summer long. So if I hope that, you know, everything um, Kind of gets back to um, to its old self. Um, we will welcome you to campus. I can tour you around campus. I can introduce you to students. Um, all of that. So so please know that as um, if if we're all able to get back onto campus this summer, um, I'm very much happy to do that for you. So. Yeah. Right. And another um, thing that I was just reminded of, uh, our marketing team scrambled uh, to put together a very cool virtual tour um, for our admissions department. So that's going to go live, I think, in the next day or so. So we'll have a link for that pretty soon. Um, and we will send that out. So if any of you haven't been on campus yet or would like to see campus um, more as it pertains to a day in the life of a student, we'll send you the link for that. You'll be able to watch a virtual tour. So it's not gonna be as good as the real thing, but I think it's, it comes pretty close. So, um, so that's a, another great option. Um, another question that came in here as we were talking um, is are about student ID cards and what those are, what those are and um, why they're important and when they'll get them, et cetera. So I'm happy to answer that question. Uh, your student ID card covers a lot of things here. Um, first of all, our buildings are all censored so that your ID card is something that gets you into the buildings when school is in session. And so you hold it in front of the little wand outside of school and um, your ID card gets you in and out of all of your classroom buildings. Uh, we've worked very hard to um, maintain a safe campus and doing the research that we have in order to um, continue to build that um, we've worked a lot with local police departments, lots of different schools um, to ensure school safety. And that's one of the ways to do it is to um, have everybody have access through an ID card. You'll also use your ID card at lunch every day. And so um, all of your money and your credit that comes onto your ID card is tracked through that. So as you walk through each of the lunch lines, um, you'll wave your ID card at one of the pads that we have there. Um, and then it's all tracked in terms of what you have for spending and um, what you've been eating for lunch each day and things of the such. We also use our ID cards for all of our entrances into any of our dances or extracurricular activities, um, oftentimes at games and whatnot, just so that um, <clears throat> we know that you're a student here at the academy, we recognize that, but it's also just one more way to ensure safety of um, knowing who's on campus um, and where they're at. So as far as when you'll get them, so that's part of your orientation process. And so um, you'll have your photo taken for your ID card during orientation. Um, and then once those are up and loaded, you'll have your ID card. Great, thank you very much. Uh, this question would probably best be directed at either uh, Mr. Vincent or Mr. Murphy. For those students who have yet to do the placement test, what does that mean in regards to their schedule? Uh, and will they still be able to consider what they want to do as far as um, choosing certain things that they want to do and levels and things like that. What? Well, Mr. Murphy, Mr. Murphy talked about the fact that we, we really use three pieces of information to find the best schedule for a particular student. And the placement test is only one of those. Um, we use the school's recommendation. We use what you think is best for you in terms of what you sign up for. And then what we do is we look for consistency between those two choices and uh, the placement test. 
somewhere along the line, we will have you take a placement test. But if two of those pieces of information are pretty consistent, then that will probably really allow us to make a pretty good determination in terms of what courses uh, and which level is the best one for you. Is that right, Mr. Murphy? Yeah, that's, I mean, we haven't decided what we're gonna do about the placement exam yet because it's um, an ongoing issue. Hopefully, um, you know, sooner rather than later, um, we might be able to do that. If we can't, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. The good news is we don't close classes. Um, I create more sections. Um, so if you don't get, I'll have students registering for classes August 31st. Uh, I have never had to tell a student you can't take these courses because we're too full. Um, if we're going to accept you, uh, we want you to get you in the classes you want. Um, and we just might have to move things around. And that's why I say, um, I'm not going to tell you what time your classes are going to meet for sure or who you have, because I will be constantly moving the schedule around all summer to make sure everybody can get the classes they want. So don't panic. If you haven't heard from one of us yet, um, probably means we're waiting on a piece of information, but you will get the classes you want. We won't, we won't let you, uh, we won't tell you anything's full. Uh, we'll get you, except for driver ed. That's the only thing, and none of you have to worry about that. That's the only course <laughs> I have to cut people off on is driver ed. All right, great, thank you. Um, uh, next question is about clubs and sports and how time commitments for the two um, conflict or, or don't conflict. So is it possible to do both uh, competitive sports and clubs, Mishwanya? It is possible, um, but not often in the same season. And so um, I'll speak to sports first uh, and then talk about the clubs and activities. All of our sports teams are um, under our interscholastic um, Vermont Principals Association window. And so, uh, as Mr. Murphy said, we travel throughout the state to be able to play on your sports teams. One of the questions that always comes up in the eighth grade visits is, um, am I gonna get cut? And so I want you to know that all of our programs, should we have enough numbers, um, we run three teams if we can, and when we can, we do. So um, that said, you will be um, asked to come to preseason, especially if you start in the fall, which means you would start before school, which is a really great way to get to know people um, in a smaller setting before school starts. Um, we have some dates for that that we certainly are going to push out to you, um, just kind of waiting to make sure that we're gonna start on time. But that said, um, when you are involved in an athletic team here, you have practice and or games six days a week. And so um, you will have practice on Saturdays. Um, we don't often practice on Sundays um, by rule. And um, we will only do that should we have a contest on a Monday. Um, but if you are involved in a sports team here, um, you won't have time to meet necessarily with um, the robotics club or the science Olympiad or the mathletes. Um, or the knitting club even because most of those meet at concurrent times. So you wouldn't be able to be in both places at the same time. So um, because there are three different athletic seasons, you might be a two sport athlete, you might be a one sport athlete. And in that case, you would be able to be involved in theater or you'd be able to be involved in any of the other clubs or activities. Um, but it's pretty hard to do both at once. And, and Mr. Vinton and I, have spent a lot of years together in the fall, uh, he working with theater, me working with athletic programming, and um, it's just really hard to be committed to both and be able to do both well and be able to continue to be a good student at the academy at the same time. Great. Uh, next question, uh, this may also go to you, Ms. is about um, building uh, handicap accessibility. All of our buildings, um, are they handicap accessible? And uh, I'm, I'll let you take it from there. Yeah, um, I would say that all of our buildings with the exception of one are handicap accessible and I think we have plans to make that a go for the summer. Um, but should there be any issue with accessibility, um, we would make accommodation to be able to make sure that that happened. Great, thank you. Um, I think you touched on it in the last question as well, but uh, another question came, about, came in about um, orientation start date and postponement possibilities and things like that. I know um, it's again up in the air, but I'll let you touch on that a little more. Sure, I, and I'm happy to do so. And so I will just tell you all that um, 
we are busily planning orientation for you right now because I know it's going to look a little different for um, for a lot of reasons coming to school after having three months off um, in the summer and kind of rebooting the system and getting everybody back on the same compass is not always an easy feat. Um, knowing that we're going to be coming for a lot longer of a stretch and everybody's kind of been pent up a little bit at home doing their homework with their parents. Um, it's going to look a little bit different. So I will tell you that our team is working really hard to figure out what that's going to look like school wide, but especially for freshmen, knowing that there are some that are going to want to do some um, different testing and whatnot, what that looks like. And so um, on the books right now, August 26th is the freshman orientation day. Um, we've had lots of conversation about whether or not we're going to extend that to two days um, for freshmen and then have um, a full orientation for two days for all of our students. Um, but I would say right now, um, we're planning on the one day for um, August 26 for freshmen. Um, and um, we'll put a lot of information out there prior to should that be something that we do more of. And I will at this time just kind of put a plug in for, um, for those of you who have come to visit, um, we do run a HALO program and maybe you've heard about it through um, some of your school counselors or people that have visited <clears throat> to school at this point. Um, HALO, HALO stands for Hilltopper Alternative Learning Opportunities. Um, it runs the last week in July. It's on the books to run the last week in July. It's open to all freshmen that are interested and um, we will have some paperwork. If it hasn't already gone out through admissions, um, you certainly can get that paperwork through admissions. Um, if you're interested in coming in early, um, <clears throat> we do a lot of different challenge activities. There's a lot of time spent on campus doing um, some tours. We work on some things called dream boards. Uh, Ed Garrity comes and speaks. I don't know if any of you have had any opportunity in listening to him, but he's a great um, Google search for all of you that are now online. Um, pretty motivational speaker to talk about, you know, what's your journey going to look like and um, how do you want to be responsible for that. And so uh, the week is set up through um, doing some service projects for the community whether or not that's going to take a different look to it. Again, lots of things in flux, but every student that's had the opportunity to be a part of the HALO program, it's kind of a pre-orientation program for people that are a little bit more nervous about coming to school and thinking that they're going to need a little bit more than one day um, of orientation. The more the merrier. We're happy to have all of you and just need to get in contact with us um, and we'll be able to put more information out as we have it. Great, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Vinton, uh, this one probably goes to you. Um, could you speak a little bit on Academy Learning Supports and the Learning Center and um, sort of uh, resources for students as far as academics go? Yes, we have several ways that we can provide support to students that need extra help for particular courses. Uh, we run the um, Academic Support Center, uh, which is not only for support, but also enrichment, which is a drop-in tutorial center. It's on the second floor of Colby Hall. And any time that a student has a free block during a study hall, for example, they can sign out of their study hall and go to the, the learning center and get focused assistance in uh, whatever topic they need a little bit of help with. We always have somebody in there that is a math specialist and we also always have somebody in there that's a writing specialist and those tend to be the big areas that people look for extra help so the learning center is a wonderful resource many students will actually get in the habit of actually signing out from their study hall every day just because the learning center is such a nice place to go and do their homework because it's focused there's somebody right at your corner that can help um, and provide the assistance that you might need. Now that having been said, the study hall teachers are also a valuable resource and can help focus your study habits and your study efforts as well. But the Learning Center is specifically designed to provide that resource to any student that wants it. And that's available not only to freshmen, but we have many sophomores, juniors, and seniors that actually end up in uh, the Learning Center looking for extra help. Sometimes a teacher will actually ask you to go to the Learning Center to, to get some focused help on something that isn't working as well as it might be in class. Um, there is also at the end of every day, there is a, a, a relatively short period, about 20 minutes, 
called our conference periods that every teacher in the school is available for that time after school. Uh, so that if a student needs help in a particular class, they can always find their teacher at that time. Uh, Mr. Murphy also mentioned the study skills program, which is a valuable program. If, if you feel that you need uh, or would benefit from some extra help organizing your overall academic career in terms of exploring ways of organizing your courses and making a study schedule and keeping track of the work and looking at note-taking strategies. The study skills program is a, a valuable a resource for those uh, that find that useful. So, Great, that's perfect. Um, this will jump back to uh, Mr. Murphy. Um, will taking computer science instead of computer literacy change the way PE works for freshman year or are those inter is, is computer lit and computer science interchangeable? Um, they're interchangeable. It can change the way. You could put off doing your PE till your sophomore year if you wanted to. Um, but I could also make it work if you want to do the one period uh, computer science course. Um, okay. That shouldn't be an issue at all. Perfect, thank you so much. It does affect their schedule a little bit because the, the computer lit and the PE are both half credit courses that go on alternating days. So if you decide to take, for example, a computer course, the robotics course, that takes up a full block. So that requires a little bit of shuffling in terms of making sure that you get the right number of credits fitting into your schedule. So, but that's something Mr. Murphy can work with anybody to kind of make sure it happens well. Yep, great. Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, this is another Mishwanya question. Uh, what are the guidelines for dress code and makeup? <laughs> <laughs> what are the guide? This is like the, the always the question, right? And so the guidelines are pretty simple and we'll, and we'll send you some of that material out from, um, from admissions as well and um, from our summer mailing. But um, neat, clean, and appropriate is really where we try to roll with that. Um, for gentlemen, we have asked that they wear a tie and a button-up shirt and dress pants and a belt. Uh, for young ladies, they need to wear a collared shirt underneath whatever they have on, uh, as well as wearing dress pants. Um, if they want to wear a skirt then, and or dress, then it needs to touch their knees. I guess that's as simple as I can make it for you. Um, and makeup, again, <laughs> neat, clean, and appropriate stuff that's not distracting. Um, we want you to dress with respect for yourself, uh, respect for others around you, and respect for the work that you do. Great, and if you have any um, further questions on the dress code, there is a great section on our website that has it very well mapped out, and I believe there's even a visual. Uh, if it's not on the website, we can send you a great visual uh, of an example dress code if you'd like to see that as well. So we can certainly provide that. Um, a couple other questions have come in uh, about summer programming, Mishwanya, so we'll stick with you. Um, sports camps like the soccer camp, is the team doing that this summer? And also, um, if you can just go a little bit further into what goes on in Halo and what, what, is, what that program does on a daily basis, that would be great. Sure. Uh, and I will speak to um, not only our own soccer programs, because I know the parents that are out there, um, I did talk to Joe Fox this morning. He and I are also um, working together closely about what's going to be offered for, for families. As far as our high school camps go, we tend to run those the third week in July. Um, so more to come about that, um, when those are happening and if they will be postponed. Um, as of right now, we're planning to run those. I will tell you that our fall preseason dates, um, if you are looking to play football in the fall, um, the actual start day for that is um, August 10th. All of our other fall sports um, will start August 13th. Um, we will have what we have called Meet the Coaches program. Um, we do have that scheduled for August 9th. All of that information will come out to you in a mailing. Um, and certainly with the summer programming for athletics, um, we will get we will get to you as soon as we can. I would say at this point um, we haven't planned for anything for summer athletic programming yet um, before July first. Great. An important part of being part of an athlete is to make sure that you come to those with a physical already and set to go, um, and it's. 
and who knows exactly how that scheduling will work right now, but as early as you can schedule your physical, the better, just so that you don't get the big rush of people trying to get physicals because you can't participate in a sport unless you've had your physical. And I would echo that in the sense that um, if tomorrow you make a call to your pediatrician's office and let them know that you're planning on playing a fall sport um, or a sport this year, then at least you're on the books. And if you're on the books, then we can certainly work with you. Um, obviously, we're working with unusual times right now, and um, it's not always uh, mentioned as being the right thing to do to go to your physician's office right now. So um, we know we're going to need to make some um, concessions for what needs to happen, but it can't hurt to at least get the physical listed on the books so that you're um, up and ready and ready for the fall when it comes. Great. Uh, another question came up um, about freshman humanities and, and what um, is part of the freshman humanities program and also the freshman capstone. Those are the two things that people have heard about. And if Mr. Vinton, if you want to touch on those two things, that would be great. Well, as Mr. Murphy mentioned, the, the freshman humanities is a combination of a social studies history class and English class. So you do a lot of work developing research skills and writing skills through the course of the year as you explore various pieces of literature and also world history um, during the entire course of the year. Now an important part of that is at the end of the year, freshmen are involved in a mini research experience that involves a presentation um, that's kind of a forerunner, a taste of what uh, the senior capstone experience is going to be like, but it's it's really not the senior capstone experience. Uh, I want to just emphasize that, but it it is to get you ready for the types of, of things that you will be learning and developing in terms of your research and writing skills and also your oral communication skills as you move through your four years here at the academy. So. Um, it's really to develop that. Every year seems to have its own big project. In the junior year, for example, in the English classes, juniors are involved in what's known as the area of interest paper, which is a big research that is to, intended to get people ready for their senior capstone course. But to move back to that freshman year kind of mini capstone experience, it is a small scale taste of what it will end up feeling like in order to end up moving into your senior year. Great, thank you very much, Mr. Vinton. Uh, Ms. Schwanya, we'll go back to you. We realized that we skipped over the HALO question. So if you wanna just go into a little bit more detail about what HALO is for uh, rising freshmen, that'd be great. So again, it's a, it's a pre-orientation program. Um, there will be a series of different activities that students will go through. Um, we have student leaders that are juniors and seniors that are part of the staffing for that program. Um, they lead them through some physical challenges. Um, they create um, what it looks like to, they'll do a, a dress code fashion show for them. For instance, um, they'll spend some time talking about a day in the life of, or if you wish you knew uh, something before you entered the academy, what would it look like? Um, there's some experience with classroom setting and what the expectations are for different classes. Um, but there's a lot of different kind of personal challenges, whether it's through hiking. Um, we culminate the week in a ropes course experience. Again, whether or not that's going to be the same this year, we're going to have to think outside of the box if that's not um, not available to us, but it's really about getting people here, getting them used to faces that they're going to see on a daily basis. Um, it gets them involved with the meeting of their class dean um, and uh, gets them engaged in some different activities that they wouldn't otherwise have before they um, meet with their advisory for, for orientation day. Great. Um, so if anybody has any further questions about HALO, as uh, Ms. Schwanier mentioned at the beginning of this call, we have lots of information on HALO in the admissions office and Campus Life does as well, and you'll be seeing that um, if you haven't already, and we, we can get you any information um, you want on, on HALO, anything further. Uh, two more Campus Life quick questions probably, Ms. Schwanier. Um, for athletes, uh, is the physical required physical just within the last 12 months? Is that the requirement? Yes. 
So they would need, under current circumstances, we have them have a physical every year. We have had a lot of conversation as to whether or not we can push that to every two years, um, but the last 12 months should be fine. Um, however, if, um, if we stay with the current code, uh, if I had a physical in January, um, I would be fine for my fall season. But if I went and played a winter sport, I would need to have another one before that date in January to be able to continue my eligibility in my winter sport. Great. Okay, perfect. And then uh, follow up about um, the dress code. Uh, do dresses need collars like the shirts do as well? No, dresses do not need collar. They need to have a modest neckline and your shoulders need to be covered um, and they need to reach your knees, but they don't need to have a collar. Okay, perfect. Um, Mr. Murphy, uh, there was a question that came up about um, APs and when APs are available for freshmen and um, how often they can take those in their freshman year, if at all, and when they can start taking them. Well, occasionally I've had a freshman take an AP course um, and that's an exception. Uh, I think we had two freshmen this year that actually took an AP class. Typically, sophomore year is when students uh, enter the AP curriculum, and that's usually through AP seminar, which would take the place of your sophomore English class, and AP world history is offered to um, sophomores. But that's general. Because um, we are tailoring the schedule to meet everybody, um, there are exceptions to that rule where I've had some sophomores take a few more than that, depending on their math placement and different things like that. Great. Uh, this one probably back to Ms. Schwanier. Um, talking about the uh, boarding students and the day students and if, if day students ever have the opportunity to hang out with boarding students and how those two groups of students uh, interact. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing opportunity for you to go to school with students from all around the world and so I can't emphasize that enough. Um, we work really hard to try to make sure that we have a boarding student um, per every freshman advisory if our numbers allow for that to happen. And so those, um, those relationships start to happen right away. Um, and certainly you'll have classes with different boarding students. Um, I can tell you that it's, um, it's been a wonderful experience as a parent to watch um, come up the walkway, uh, either my son or daughter with friends from Romania or friends from Japan or friends from Thailand. And then the student that they came up to from graded school with um, and all kind of hanging out together. So I would say we do a lot of work to make sure that the day and dorm population work well together. Our student leaders are a strong uh, proponent of that and um, they actually really work to bridge the gap to make sure that that happens. So um, to be able to go to school with um, <clears throat> people from all around the world is a unique experience that not every Vermont student gets to have. And so um, I would say that's one of the benefits and our dorm students love to go home and have a home cooked meal and meet day student families and have them embrace them just as much as we like to have day students come to our dorms and visit with our students from all around the world. Great. Um, Mr. Vinton and Mr. Murphy, you guys could touch on this. Uh, we've talked quite a bit about athletics. Um, Maybe if you guys could touch on um, the arts, uh, both performing arts and visual arts and all the art uh, opportunities for students. And Mr. Murphy, I know you talked about the prereq for most art classes being our drawing and painting, but if you wanna talk a little bit more about our arts program, that would be great. Well, one of the things that's true about our art program is that the teachers in our art program, for the most part, are professional artists that have decided to become teachers of the arts. So you get to rub shoulders with people that are world-class artists in many cases. Um, just as one example, we have our, our printmaking uh, students will travel to Florence, Italy on a regular basis to work in a professional art studio, um, in a printmaking studio to get experience with um, students from all over the world to get that opportunity. It's an incredible, incredible opportunity for doing that. Our dance instructor, um, Marianne Harabi, um, is a graduate of the Martha Graham School in New York City, and she regularly brings up some of her compatriots from New York City to come and work with students and have master classes. Um, and that's pretty typical across the board. Um, so our curricular art offerings are just really astounding. I mean, I think they rivaled many, many college art programs. Um, 
in terms of extracurricular programs, there is an art club, there's photography club. We have uh, Academy Theater, which is the largest non-sport organization on campus. Um, and it really requires the same amount of time commitment as any sport does. Um, so people will often ask, can I do sports and can I do uh, theater at this? And the answer is, well, yes, but probably not at the same time. Um, and we actually have quite a few people that do sports one season and then do theater in another season. So that's a wonderful opportunity for everybody. But um, people find our art programs. They often say they, when they come back from college, they often say how much they miss the art instruction here at the Academy. Great. Mr. Murphy, do you have anything to add to that or? Yeah, I'd just like to remind people that, remember, you don't have to technically major into anything at the Academy. You can take some arts courses and have a strong academic program or take a CTE class and take an art program. Uh, there's gonna be plenty of opportunities to do both. And, and I think most of our, our most successful <laughs> students are the ones that are really well-rounded and take some courses um, in areas that they have an interest in, but maybe they're not gonna study in college. And, and uh, the arts is one of those areas where we have a lot of kids dabble in the arts um, and then decide to pursue that at, at a higher level. Um, so I would just like to remind people um, that you can take the arts and strong academics at the same time. Great. Uh, one of the things that we'll, we're getting to the end here, we don't want to keep you much longer than an hour, but um, we'll, we have a couple more questions that have come in and Ms. Schwann, you're one of them talking about um, places to hang out before school and where people are allowed to be uh, and when they're allowed to be there and uh, after school as well, what that should look like for, for students. Sure. Uh, the field house opens at six in the morning. And so for students who like to get a workout in before school, we have a lot of students that choose to do that and um, bring their clothes to school and shower here before, um, <clears throat> after, their, after their workout, some choose to do that. The library is open at 7 a.m. And so for any students who wanna use the library um, as a place to study and hang out before school starts, then, um, then they're able to do that. The cafe, um, we also have a cafe on the side of our cafeteria. Um, the cafe also opens at seven in the morning and students can get a full breakfast option there as well. Um, and most of our academic buildings are open by 7.30 so that students can access teachers or go leave their bag at their first A block class or whatnot. Um, so they're able to do that as well. Perfect. Uh, this is the last question that's come in on the chat. So I'll ask this one and then we'll wrap up. Um, Ms. Schwanier, this one goes to you again. Um, at what point will students learn more about all of the clubs? Um, maybe talking about the clubs and activities fair and when do they have to sign up for those clubs by, uh, I'll let you take it. Yeah, that's great. So our clubs um, change each year given the student population. And so um, if there's something that's not offered uh, and those of you who have been here for your visit, um, if there's something that's not offered in one year, it doesn't necessarily mean that it can't be offered in that given year. And so um, if you wanna start a club, if there's something that's not here, once you go to the club and activity fair, um, then you, you can come to the Campus Life Office, you can get a, a form, uh, you can find some students that are also interested in what you would like to start and then find a faculty advisor. And then we push that through our student government to get that up and running. Um, on your orientation week, um, usually the first Monday when it's everybody's orientation, um, we spend the afternoon with all of our clubs and activities showcased in the field house so that you can go around and see what's offered. Um, anything from knitting club to science Olympiad to um, any of the arts clubs that have been mentioned, academy theater, intramural sports, um, you name it, it's, it's there. Um, and so you'll have an opportunity to do that. And then you can sign up. Our clubs usually start the second week of school so that you are kind of immediately, once you get yourself, your feet on the ground here, you're involved in something. And I'll just say to, to parents that are out there and to you students that are out there, um, if you're involved in something in addition to your academic programming, it, it helps foster a deeper connection to a place um, and an accountability to another group of people um, that help enhance the experience that you have. So it's our hope that every student here takes um, full advantage of all the opportunities that are allowed and allotted for them. Um, and so we want as many kids day and dorm involved in our club and activity program as possible. Fantastic. All right. Um, so that actually was the last question that came through the chat. 
this has been an incredibly exciting event to be part of from our perspective uh, at St. Jay. I mean, admissions wise, and I know campus life and academics and guidance and everybody in between is we're all so excited to see you here on this call and more importantly to uh, welcome you to our community next year uh, and, and beyond. So thank you so much uh, for taking the time to sit with us and ask very thoughtful um, questions. And hopefully you found this information session helpful. Um, I'll make a, a little plug that there may be more of these for you to participate in uh, over the coming weeks or months. Um, that's, not a, that's not a promise, but there's certainly um, talks about doing more um, pointed events like this. So maybe one about athletics, one about arts, things like that. So we will keep you posted um, on possibilities as they come up. Uh, the last thing I will say is we are very excited, uh, like I said, for this event and we wanna share it with the world. Um, so we're going to take a screenshot of this screen that, that you see us on right now. So if you, your names are not gonna show up on, on the screen um, because no one's talking, if you don't want to be part of a screenshot that may be on the St. Johnsbury Academy social media pages, website, things like that, we'll give you uh, a couple seconds to turn off your video, but please know we want to see all of you because we, we're very proud of uh, our incoming freshman class and we wanna share you with the world, like I said. So um, we're gonna take a screen grab here in about 10 seconds. So you have about 10 seconds to and turn off your, uh, your video. Just, real quick. just one and last thing. Murphy will, will fill in here too. Sorry. No, go ahead. Okay, sorry. Um, just wanted to tell you all, any, anyone who, who has not received an enrollment agreement um, from us, that means we're just still waiting on some, um, some pieces of information, but I don't want you to worry about it. But, um, but I, um, I've been in contact with you. Uh, if you have not received an email from me, um, please call the admissions office um, and, and I will get in contact with you immediately. Um, but the sooner we get you um, accepted and, and, in, and in our system, uh, then we can start pushing things out to you like all of our summer programming and things like that. So I just want to make sure they all knew that. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, lastly, we are going to um, take that screen grab right now. But uh, if you have any other questions, further questions about anything Academy related, um, you can find all of our uh, email addresses on the website. Um, but you can always, if you don't know any of our first names or uh, first initials or last names, you can always just email admissions at stjacademy.org and that's a, an easy way for us to get your questions and we'll forward them off uh, as we need to. So now that I see we have a dog in the screen, this is a perfect time to, uh, to take a photo. So we'll do a screen grab and, uh, and we'll, we'll send you out to the world. But again, thank you all so much for joining us. It was a pleasure uh, to be here and bringing you the information and hopefully uh, we will see you all sooner than later. Please stay healthy and uh, we'll see you all soon. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye.